our high school. We're able to do these plexiglass pods with about a maximum of 25, even at the high school level, 25. But we've got much larger classes. We've got over 500 that have 26 or more in them. We all know that from past presentations. We've got all these class changes with large groups in the hall. Our largest middle school in-person attendance approximates the in-person attendance of our smallest high school. Most all of our high schools greatly exceed the number on campus at any other location. So we are still hampered in maintaining the appropriate health protocols, having a hundred percent in. We're looking at a couple of different methods to greatly increase that number because it's not providing enough interaction for a number of our students. We've got to do some rearranging. We're in the midst of doing that, moving some classes. We're in the midst of putting plexiglass pods in place. We're going to be able to live stream or record most classes for any student that's not physically present. Now, live stream and record is not two-way interaction. We do not have the bandwidth coming out of schools for 100% even of our high schools to provide two-way interaction. We're looking at two schedule options as we move through the process. Right now we've got one that both they average to be 75%, but you can look at one as a, like a 70, 80 attendance plan. That is most students would attend three days one week and four days the next for a total of 70%. Students needing remediation would additionally attend. So they would attend four days each week for a total of eight of 10 days. So needing remediation being any student making a D or F it would be available on a space available basis for grades above D or F. The other alternative we're looking at is three of four days, Monday through Thursday, plus three out of every four Fridays for a total of 15 days out of 20, which is 75% attendance every four weeks. Right now they're all at 40% with remediation being done in person every Friday there would still be five Fridays of that before we would implement this. We can work out the details to safely do so. This is sort of the timeline that we're on. We've talked with select students about it. We've talked with select groups of teachers about it. Uh, we met obviously with the principals about it, met with the appropriate support personnel at the district level. We've got a couple of plans out there that we're getting feedback on. Uh, that's happening this week, as you see there, week of December the 7th. Week of the 14th, we'd make some final decisions regarding that and make the announcement. And we would launch the schedule. This is a little bit misaligned, but I'll tell you why it is. Right now, the semester is scheduled to start on, I think it's the 15th, but it's a Thursday. And the Friday is a work day and the Monday's a holiday. So we would start second semester on the 19th, the Tuesday, instead of starting it for one day, one day, students, students not being present there for two days and then coming back. So we would, we would move the start of second semester uh, to the 19th. And that new schedule would launch in full on the week of the 19th. There is no requirement that semesters have equal days. There is a requirement related to Carnegie units of credit as far as having a number of hours of instruction for a Carnegie unit of credit, but it does not require 90 days to get that, to meet that requirement. 